Hi Maurice, this is Mike from Stagecoach Road Vintage Sewing Machine and this is the final test of your Singer 301. And in this test, uh, even though it's possible that you already know this machine intimately, we're going to show you how to thread the machine, wind the bobbin, how to work the various controls and uh, get you up and running right away. And uh, we'll also post this video to the internet uh, because there are a lot of Singer 301 owners that uh, <coughs> would like some tips about how to operate their machine. So we're going to start by winding a bobbin. And uh, um, you'll find your bobbin in the bobbin case below the fold-up bed. And there's a little lever on the side that you pull. And then your bobbin case will just slide right out. Um, make sure that your needle is in the up position because uh, if the needle is down in your bobbin case when you pull on it, uh, you could bend your needle. So uh, as long as you're holding the lever, the little handle on your bobbin case, uh, your bobbin is not going to fall out, which makes it easy, easier to insert it. So let go of the little handle. Drop out your bobbin, pull it out of the tension spring there, and uh, let's see, let's empty it. Your bobbin winder is here on the side. You'll see the little tire, it's kind of hard to miss, and uh, to engage it, just put it up against the hand wheel and then when the hand wheel turns it turns the bobbin winder but you'll notice it also turns the rest of the machine so if you don't want the machine to cycle while you're winding your bobbin you release the clutch knob in the center of the hand wheel the chrome knob you turn it a quarter turn towards you and now you can turn the hand wheel and the rest of the machine doesn't cycle so you'll see that your bobbin winder is turning so Put your bobbin on the bobbin winder. Put your thread spool on the spool pin. Go into the rear thread guide. Over to the front thread guide. Wait, back up. It's had its own spool pin for bobbin winding. So you're going to put your spool on the spool pin. Go under your bobbin winder tensioner. And into the bobbin from the inside out through one of the holes in the side. It doesn't really matter which one. They're all pretty much the same. Then put a few wraps on the thread so that it holds itself in place. Snip off the little tail and then you're ready to go. Just get, oh wait, not quite. And put your bobbin winder in the up position and there's a little finger on here uh, behind the bobbin that as the bobbin fills when the bobbin gets full uh, the thickness of the thread is going to push it away from the hand wheel so it'll stop winding when the bobbin's full we go and you don't have to go fast there's no hurry if you go fast you have more of a chance of tangling things up that should be enough for our test so put your bobbin wind take off the bobbin put the bobbin winder down and reclutch your machine by turning the knob clockwise until it's snug. When you put your bobbin in the bobbin case, you want the thread to come off the top of the bobbin in this direction. That way it'll go correctly into the slot on the side of the bobbin case and under the leaf spring that provides your lower tension. And that's right here. 
goes into the slot, pull it down under the spring until it clicks into place. And then you'll feel that there's a little bit of tension on your thread. Again, hold the uh, little lever on the side out and your bobbin stays in place while you put it in. Raise the bed. And you want to slip it onto the, the uh, pin of the, uh, in the middle of the hook. And your, your little, uh, the latch on your bobbin case is going to fold in that direction. So the point of the latch is going to be pointing towards the back of the machine. And that way you'll have the bobbin in, in the correct position. To thread the machine, put your spool on the spool pin. Go through the rear thread guide down to the front thread guide and down between the discs of the tension assembly. And as you go around, you're going to catch this check spring here on the side and pull it up until your thread goes into this notch at the top. Make sure you get the notch. Then when you pull up, you'll see your check spring move. Then you know that you're in correctly. Catch this big thread guide here and then go into your take-up lever, which is easier if it's in the up position. Down to this thread guide on the face plate. Down to this thread guide. Down to this thread guide. And down to the thread guide on your needle clamp. Your machine is one of the few machines that threads from right to left, from the inside of the machine towards the outside. And that will make all the difference in the world. Hold your thread, hold your upper thread. Turn the hand wheel one full revolution towards you. That will take the upper thread down, wrap it around the bobbin, and bring up the lower thread. There we go, lower thread. Put the thread between the toes of the presser foot and towards the back of the machine. Let's look at the stitch length. That's this lever over here. You'll notice that there's a scale of numbers on here and then a line that goes across in the center. That line is the zero point. When, when the stitch length lever is right there, your needle goes up and down, but your fabric does not move. Uh, so if you sew there, you're gonna make a big wad of thread there and things are gonna jam up on you. So if you go down from that zero line, your stitches are going to get longer and longer and longer and longer until your longest stitches will be all the way down. From the center line up are your reverse stitches and the same thing, the further up you go, the longer and longer your stitches get. If you want your stitches to be the same length when you're going forward as when you're going in reverse to back tack or whatever you reverse for. Uh, you can turn the lever knob until it contacts the uh, face plate. And now uh, when you go into reverse, your stitches will be the same length in forward and reverse. We're going to put it on about 12 stitches per inch, which is a good uh, stitch length for regular fabric. Uh, hold your thread for the first few stitches uh, until it locks in place. No reason to go fast, although you can if you want to. Raise your presser foot, let the needle be the pivot, and turn your fabric. Longer stitch lengths, you loosen up that knob 
we're just going to leave it open so we have a full range from uh, small to long. And well, we'll do a longer stitch. You'll see the fabric move much faster. Give me a longer stitch. And that's a beautiful, nice, straight, even stitch. Looks like it could use just a little more tension. Okay, that is your stitch length adjuster. This is your upper tension. And usually uh, you want to have it set somewhere around three for regular fabric. Uh, <clears throat> a little more if you're doing something heavy. A little less if you're doing something lightweight. Just, you know, watch your watch your fabric. If it's puckering up uh, and pulling too tight, then you may want to let off the uh, tension a little bit. If it's leaving loops on the bottom of the fabric because it's not pulling up tight enough, you add a little more tension. Not much, just a, you know, incrementally. Um, this knob on top is your sewing foot pressure. Uh, if you want a little more pressure, like if you're sewing something heavy and it's just not really aggressively moving the fabric, you might want to add a little more pressure. If you're, uh, if you're going to be sewing something really delicate, you may want to back it off, turn it counterclockwise a, a little bit, uh, just so the teeth don't grab your uh, fabric quite as uh, aggressively and uh, damage your fabric. Uh, basically, that's it. Um, if you want to oil your machine regularly, if you're sewing every day, all day, you probably want to oil it every day if you're sewing if you're uh, if you sew you know maybe one or two days a week uh, a couple hours a day uh, you may want to oil every couple of weeks if you mostly use another machine and uh, you just use this one on rare occasions uh, bring it out to uh, sew a patch on something uh, and it hasn't been oiled in say three months uh, oil it because the oil does evaporate and uh, the machine just is not going to be able to uh, do its job if it's not properly oiled. There are oil holes that you'll see in various places on your machine uh, and there are <coughs> there's a, a cover on the bottom that you want to take off and you'll be able to see the movement po movement points down there and every movement point where they actually uh, make contact uh, will need a drop or two of good quality sewing machine oil but you have a user manual so uh, read the uh, oiling instructions um, that'll point out all of the important spots to oil um, every once in a while like every other oiling take the uh, needle plate off there are two screws that hold it on take the needle plate off and brush out the lint and dust and uh, crud that collects under the needle plate around the feed dogs um, Yeah, I think that's uh, that's about it. Um, this is an awesome machine. You made a great choice. Uh, this is the uh, big sister to the Singer Featherweight, and it has um, you know some of the very same parts, and it makes a real similar nice clean stitch to the Featherweight. Lightweight uh, aluminum body with all steel parts inside. Uh, I think you're going to be real happy with this machine. So this is uh, again. This is Stagecoach Road Vintage uh, Stagecoach Road Vintage Sewing Machine. We are on Stagecoach Road, so StagecoachRoadSewing.com. Uh, come see us. Uh, come see the hundreds and hundreds of B 
beautiful restored machines uh, that we've uh, done over the years. Um, you'll see views from all different sides and a little bit of information about each machine. Uh, machines from the Civil War era up into the uh, mid-1970s. Um, machines from Europe and America and uh, Japan. And, uh, at the top of the uh, page, there are a few machines that will be for sale. We usually have oh, 15 to 30 machines that you can buy right now, restored, ready to sew. Um, again, that's stagecoachroadsewing.com. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.